This is Ambitious Angelo for Woo Cuts TV. And I'm still here at Caper 19 with the Paul Mitchell brand. I'm here with Jason Whaler. Welcome to Woo Cuts TV, Jason. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Excited to be here. How many times have you been at Caper? Caper, this is actually my first time coming to Caper. Same, same. There you know, we go, bro. First time at how, Caper, how dude. How impressive is this? This is incredible. The energy from the students to the staff to all the speakers, man, it's electric. I felt it in the parking lot when I pulled in. I, I cannot agree with you more. It's literally the most contagious thing. You walk in here, you leave, it's almost like I feel so full. I'm ready to go run around at right? Disneyland, man. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. It's been an, an, an unbelievable event. Awesome. Jason, tell me a little bit about your story, man. I know I was just reading up on some things. You've been on some reality shows. You've yeah. been on a celebrity rap star. Uh, <laughs> like, I've, been, I've done a little bit of everything. And I think, you know, uh, I think the, the simplest way to put it through is, you know, I grew up uh, in Laguna Beach and uh, I, I was actually a baseball player. Mm -hmm. And at the age of 18, I had that very unique opportunity of being on a television show, which was Laguna Beach. Uh, and that transitioned into the hills. And then that went into celebrity rap superstar. And then it also went down to celebrity rehab. So through that duration, I went through a very public battle with addiction, uh, you know, and I had a, a lot of stuff that I had to work on personally, but uh, now I actually work in the recovery space and then I'm an advocate for substance abuse and mental health. And actually the Hills is coming back. So I used to be the drunk womanizing alcoholic. And now I come back and I'm gonna spread hope and awareness and get people insight on uh, what recovery really looks like. Yeah, that's amazing to see the full transition because there's so many people, you know, that get caught up in the MTV life, you yeah. know? Uh, actually, I was almost casted for the show. Are you, are you the one? Okay. And that was one of my fears of right. becoming that womanizing alcoholic party animal, you know, yeah. guy. Um, and just seeing, I just kept picturing my grandma, <clears throat> my grandma watching it and be like, "Is this gonna be something she's gonna be proud of?" You know. Um, but just a message that you have nowadays, you know. A lot of people stay in the shadows. They're in the darkness. They don't want to, you know, their pride, their ego. You know, what were some of the things that you had to battle through um, to even just be okay with saying, hey, I have a problem? Well, I think the biggest thing is by expressing vulnerability, it creates humility, and you have to be an open book with it. And I mean, that's the thing is if people are going to judge me for who I am when I'm in a, in a very negative state, like I always tell people, addiction does not dictate who I am, but it does not justify my actions. So I've had to take ownership of my actions, and I've had to be in a place where I can really hold that and, you know, and change my life. And I've had to accept and I had to surrender. You know, I didn't, I was not in a place where I was willing to accept the fact that I was suffering with alcoholism and, and full-blown addiction. And, uh, once I did that, you know, I think it's by taking ownership, accepting and, and, and taking action was the key, the key pillars to it. And now I actually utilize my story. All great change proceeds through chaos, right? So I, I've taken my story and, uh, and I've taken it to a place where I can actually hopefully impact other people's lives. I know there's a lot of students um, and professionals as well that get caught up with, you know, the alcoholic life or, or addiction. What's something that uh, you'd like to, to have these people, you know, hear, you know, that there is maybe that there's hope or maybe some help or anything yeah, along those lines. I think it's look, and I think in the day, the, the day and the age that we live in, to, you know, today with instant gratification, you know, it's it's such a false sense of reality. And the, the truth is, you got to be comfortable with yourself and content with you. And if you're not, there's nothing wrong with reaching out. You know, a big part of my program is connecting with others. The one number one form of happiness, the longest living study at Harvard, is around happiness. And you know what that's through? It's through human connection. And and that's the biggest thing is, is I always. You know, had, I was the guy that had this overinflated ego, underestimated sense of self-worth, and I was just never in a place where I wanted to, to admit that I had these faults. And, and once I let go of that and I opened up, got vulnerable with somebody else, uh, they helped me through the path. You know, so it's, it's one, you're not alone. Reach out if you're going through something. That's the best thing you can possibly do. There's no shame in that. You know, it's at the end of the day, you're only hurting yourself. Uh, and there is a, a much higher road to go. There really is. You know, <clears throat> they say addiction is, is the fruit, right? What were some of the roots of your addiction? Because you know it's a personal inward journey that most people just think like, oh no, it's just a substance or it's just this period that I'm going through. What were some of your roots that you like boiled it down to? That's a, that's a great question. And I think, it, look, it is different for everybody. There's no cookie cutter model to substance abuse or mental health. And something that I've, I've noticed within myself is I believe I'm pre-genetically disposed I'm pre -genetic, yeah, I'm pre genetically disp dispositioned to having the actual gene of addiction, um, you know. But I also just know, knew at a very young age that I just had a lot of self shame, a lot of guilt, a lot of just a lot of self hatred, and I don't know where it stemmed from. I grew up with a very good family, I grew up with parents who are still married today, which is a rarity within Orange County itself, you know. And uh, I, it, there was for me, it was just a lot of the uh, self shaming and stuff, and I just didn't, I didn't have the education or insight to know what to do with that, um, you know, at such a young age. Because I can look back at 14 or 15 when I when I can look back and identify those moments. There was no outlet for that, and as I got through, as I got older, 
alcohol and drugs started to relieve, alleviate those symptoms that I was feeling, right? And it was something that I never really looked at. And it was just something that I had always just manifested within. And I was never able to project why I felt those ways. And I had to go through so many years of trying to, to figure that out. Uh, but it became, you know, I was, thank God, by getting sober and stuff, I was able to go back to that to that age and be able to deal with what I had to go through. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jason. I appreciate your story, man. Of course. Honestly, the there's so many people that need to hear this, you know, yeah. that are either in the shadows of, of their pride, their ego, their fame, uh, you know, and, and they need to get help and stuff, you know. And we here at the Paul Mitchell um, Caper 2019, you know, so many students out there that either are struggling or will be struggling in the future, you know, and they need to have that message and need to know that there's hope and there's help out there. So. There is 100% and the thing I would like to close on is there's, there is no normality in escaping reality and it's really identifying why is that, you know, why are you trying to do that? And that's that could be the first question yourself, you know, you ask yourself is why are you trying to escape? There it is. So we're going to escape this interview right here. Hey. <laughs> My name is Ambitious Angelo. This is Jason Wright, Baylor right here and we're here at 2019 Paul Mitchell Caper. Thank you guys so much. Cool Cuts TV out.